Mitch is certainly one of the best players in this game, and I've always admired his game. He's going to be a challenge, no matter how you look at it, and you know, I respect that, and uh, I look forward to the challenge as much as he probably looks forward to the challenge tomorrow. It's hard to find a hole in his game as during the 90s, he was almost universally regarded as the second best two guard behind Michael Jordan. One of the purest shooters and scorers the league had ever seen, he would average at least 22 points per game for the first 10 years of his career, and he took every second he was on the court seriously, giving full effort on both sides of the ball. He started as one third of the exciting yet short-lived run TMC trio, then went on to six straight all-star games, had five all-NBA selections, and would be the second highest scoring shooting guard of the 90s behind only Michael Jordan. But nowadays, you barely hear his name when talking about the top two guards of all time. Part of this being because he was quiet and got it done on the court without flash or flair, but the bigger reason being because he spent his best years in a small market, who also happened to be one of the worst teams at the time in the Sacramento Kings. And in a league that measures greatness by success, his teams didn't have much of that. But he's not to blame as he did everything he could, day in and day out, to will his team to as many wins as possible. And that's why today's episode is on Mitch Richmond, who one could argue is the most underrated player of all time. Let's jog your memory. Mitch Richmond attended Boyd Anderson High School, where football was his first love, and he would be good friends with some pretty good future NFL players, such as Michael Irvin, as well as Benny and Brian Blades. But he would start playing basketball in 10th grade, he reportedly played down low for a lot of his high school career due to his size and the physicality he had developed from football, where he would begin to develop his ability to finish through contact, which served him well his entire career. Unfortunately, Richmond would not receive any scholarship offers and had some academic issues, so after obtaining his high school diploma in the summer, he took the JUCO route as the next step in his basketball career. Richmond would attend Moberly Area Community College in Missouri which was pretty far from his home of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and he would reportedly be quite homesick. However, he would still help the team to a two-year record of 69-9 for his freshman and sophomore seasons, while continuing to play forward and averaging about 13 points a game. He would develop a close relationship with his head coach, Dean Altman, and when Altman accepted an assistant position with Kansas State going into the 87 season, he brought Richmond along with him. At Kansas State, Richmond would be expected to not only score, but to create with the ball, as he would be moved to shooting guard, which was more appropriate for his size and helped him work on his shooting ability. But he would bring with him his physicality and finishing. The Wildcats had been a mediocre team since the early 80s, posting just one winning season since their last tournament appearance in 1982. But Richmond would finish second on the team in scoring, rebounding, and assists. And the Wildcats would be without Norris Coleman, their best player from the year prior for the first 12 games of the year, due to admission violations, which were discovered late. But the poised Richmond led the team to a 9-3 record in those 12 games. Then, the Wildcats would go 10-7 the rest of the way, as they entered the tournament at 19-10, their best record and first tournament appearance since 82. The Wildcats would play Georgia in round 1, and this is where Richmond truly announced himself, as he led the team with 34 points, 11 rebounds, and went 5-5 five for five from beyond the arc, as the Wildcats won by 3 points. Kansas State would face top-seeded UNLV, led by All-American Armin Gilliam in round two, but would get blown out as the entire Kansas team struggled. Richmond would still lead the way with 19 points and 14 rebounds though. And what is most impressive is that Richmond would explain on the Knuckleheads podcast, due to not wanting to redshirt because of a broken wrist, he played the entire season with a rubber cast on his shooting arm. So Richmond had just put the nation on notice. And for his first season with Kansas State, he averaged about 18 and a half points five and a half rebounds, and two and a half assists per game. Coleman left for the NBA, so it was Richmond's team going into his senior season, and he would be the team's leading scorer by over 10 points per game. Again be second in rebounds, and assists, all while shooting over 51%. He led the Wildcats to an overall record of 25 and 9, which included a win versus number 3 ranked Oklahoma. The 1988 season was also highlighted by the Sunflower Showdown rivalry between Kansas, led by Danny Manning, and Kansas State, as they would trade wins throughout the year, as Richmond scored 35 to win the first matchup on January 30th in Kansas, ending their 55-game home winning streak, but then the Wildcats would lose by one at home in the rematch on February 18th. Kansas State would then beat Kansas in the Big 8 tournament to advance to the championship game, eventually losing to Oklahoma. 
The NCAA tournament would begin with Kansas State beating LaSalle, who were led by Lionel Simmons, a future teammate of Richmond's, as Richmond put up a game-high 30 on nearly 53% shooting and 9 assists. Richmond didn't have the same output against DePaul in Round 2, finishing with 19 points on about 43% shooting, but the Wildcats were still able to advance to a Sweet 16 matchup versus one-seeded Purdue and Richmond would put up a game-high 27 points and 11 rebounds in a 3-point upset of Purdue. The Elite 8 was the final installment of the 88 Sunflower Showdown, but it would end in defeat as Richmond went cold, finishing with 11 points on 4 of 14 from the field and 1 of 5 from 3, along with 6 turnovers, ending the Wildcats' season and Richmond's college career. But for his senior season, he would average about 22.5 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game while being named consensus second team All-American. Richmond would suit up for the US national team in the Seoul Summer Olympics, where he would put up about nine points per game for the bronze medal winning 1988 team. For the fifth pick in the draft, the Golden State Warriors select Mitch Richmond of Kansas State. Richmond made his NBA case and would up his stock more in the NBA Summer League tournament for prospects, eventually being selected fifth overall by the Golden State Warriors who were coming off a 20-62 and 62 season, but had one of the league's budding stars in Chris Mullen, who Richmond was now going to pair with on the other wing. The Warriors would also hire Don Nelson to coach the team for Richmond's rookie season, and behind Nelson's fast-paced, run-and-gun offense, the Warriors went from the 14th-ranked offense in 88 to the 4th-ranked offense in 89. Their defense was dead last, but their defense was second last the year prior anyway. The Warriors would try to make up for this lack of defense as they had acquired Manute Bowl from the Bullets in the offseason, and he would go on to average a league-leading 4.3 blocks per game. Mullen was the team's star as he led the team in scoring and would finish as the league's fifth leading scorer, but Richmond wasn't far behind as he would be second on the team and lead all rookies with 22 points per game and shoot almost 37% from three while also scoring a career-high 47 in a March 4th win versus Sacramento. En route to Rookie of the Year, Richmond and Mullen formed a duo that led the Warriors to a 23-game improvement and a playoff berth. The Warriors would shock the 51-31 Jazz in Round 1 with a sweep, as they survived incredible performances from Utah's Malone and Stockton duo. But Mullen and Richmond wouldn't be outdone, as they both put up over 25 points while each shooting over 54% and Richmond would also finish second on the team in rebounds and first in assists for the series, which included a 26-point, 11-rebound, and postseason career-high 8-assist Game 3 as well. The Warriors got the Suns in Round 2, and after splitting the first two games, the Suns won three straight to win the series in five games. Richmond couldn't get it going in Round 2, as he dropped a third on the team in scoring with less than 17 points on less than 39% shooting, and going just 2 of 12 from 3 but he would lead the team in rebounds, recording a postseason career high of 13 in Game 2, and Richmond's stellar rookie season would end with averages of about 22 points, a career high 5.9 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. The Warriors had their high octane offense on the wings, but they needed someone to make it all go, and they would get that someone with the 14th pick in the 1989 draft. So now the Warriors had an established premier player in the league in Mullen, the reigning rookie of the year who looked heading for stardom in Richmond, and the lightning quick rookie floor general in Tim Hardaway, as these three would team up to become run TMC. The Warriors once again had the top offense and second worst defense, and with Hardaway mounting the point, the Warriors boasted an elite transition offense, which led to Mullen and Richmond both putting up over 22 points per game, and Richmond shooting a career high 49.7% from the field. But even with as good as their offensive trio was, the Warriors allowed nearly 120 points per game, which would lead to regression from their previous year as they finished 35 and 47 and missed the playoffs. And for Richmond's second season, he averaged about 22 points, four and a half rebounds, and three assists per game. Hardaway took a huge step in year two, and the Warriors now had an elite offensive trio, as run TMC combined to average over 72 points per game. And they would also get a scoring boost off the bench from Sarunas Marshallonis, although he would only play 50 games. Hardaway's speed and passing ability was a perfect complement to Mullen's sharpshooting and Richmond's slashing and finishing, as the Warriors would be one of the most exciting shows in the NBA. Richmond would again shoot over 49%, have 17 games with at least 30 points, and would record 40 points and a career-high 7 steals in a January 31st win versus the Clippers. The Warriors' D was still bottom two, and the offense had actually dropped to second, but with three of the league's top 11 scorers on the same team, 
Golden State finished 44-38 and, and were back in the playoffs. Golden State would play the second seeded Spurs in round 1 and would lose game 1, which only validated most people's expectations that the Spurs would easily get through the Warriors. But then the Warriors would win 3 straight, including 2 by double figures, to stun the Spurs and win the series which would be their last playoff series win until 2007. Run TMC would average over 22 a game, and Marshallonis would chip in just over 17 off the bench. Richmond would be third on the team in scoring, but first among starters in both field goal and free throw percentage, which included a 27-point Game 3 on over 70% from the field. They would then face the Magic Johnson-led Showtime Lakers, and although they would split the first two games, the Lakers would win the next three to win the series. But the series was closer than it looked, as 4 out of the 5 games were decided by 10 points or less, and Mullen would also miss Game 1 with the knee injury. Run TMC continued to score well, with Hardaway leading the team and Richmond coming in second, but Richmond's shooting would drop to a still respectable 47.6%. However, he would go just 3 of 14 from 3. And even though they lost, Run TMC looked like they were going to be a force for years, and Richmond's third season ended with averages of about 23 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. But on the first day of the Warriors' 92 season, Richmond, along with Les Jepsen and a second round pick, was traded to the Sacramento Kings for their top draft choice, Billy Owens, out of Syracuse. Owens was a stud in college, and Nelson really liked his versatility in being able to play the 2 through 4, as well as his ability to make the Warriors bigger. But it left fans upset and scratching their heads, as the Warriors really looked like they had something special, and after getting a taste, it was taken away. And Richmond was also hurt by this, as not only was he leaving the only team he knew, but he had developed great friendships with Mullen and Hardaway. Richmond arrived in Sacramento on November 1st, and on day one he knew he was in a bad situation, as his new teammate would greet him with a less than encouraging statement. The next night they would play Richmond's old team, however Richmond wouldn't suit up for his first game until November 5th, so he was watching from the sidelines to see what his new team was all about, and they definitely didn't show him much. And then Richmond would be even more shocked when the team would have two days off after such an embarrassing loss. Richmond was instantly touted as the star of the team, but there were some promising pieces alongside him, like forwards Wayman Tisdale and a second year Lionel Simmons, who had all the potential in the world, until injuries derailed his career much too soon. Richmond would lead the team in scoring in year 4, playing 80 games and putting up a career high in assists, while scoring double figures in all but 2 games. The Kings also had a bottom ranked defense, but unlike his time in Golden State, they finished with the middle of the pack offense and in turn finished 29-53 and 53 and missed the playoffs, which would unfortunately be a common theme during Richmond's time in Sacramento. But Richmond would end the year as the ninth leading scorer in the NBA, with averages of about 22.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. After having two different coaches throughout the season for his first year in Sacramento, the Kings hired Gary St. Jean, who would be head coach for the majority of Richmond's tenure with the Kings. Richmond came out strong in 1993 and was the team's leading scorer, forming a good duo with Lionel Simmons. The Kings had also drafted Walt Williams with the 7th pick in the draft, who would be a great bench scorer turned starter this year. Richmond was playing his usual consistent and reliable basketball and was recognized for it, as he earned the first All-Star selection of his career. But the Kings were 16-30 on February 11th, and on their way to their 17th win, when Richmond would fracture his thumb midway through the 4th quarter. And on top of missing his first All-Star game, he would miss the remainder of the season, as the Kings finished 25-57 and, and again missed the playoffs. This would be the first and one of the only times in his career that Richmond missed significant time in a season due to injury, as his 45 games would end up being the second lowest mark of his career. And in those 45 games, he would average about 22 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. Richmond was back healthy for 1994, but after the team started 4-6, they went on an 8 game losing streak, then would go on another 7 game skid a couple months later, then another 6 game winless streak a couple months after that, to finish the year 28 and 54, missing the playoffs once again. The Kings had drafted Duke standout Bobby Hurley in the 93 draft, but after playing just 19 games for the team, he would be involved in a car accident on December 12th, where he was thrown from the vehicle, sustaining life threatening injuries and missing the rest of the year. Additionally, the Kings would trade for rugged center Olden Polonese right before the trade deadline. Richmond was again the team's top player and scorer, along with Tisdale and Simmons, in Simmons' last good year of his career. Richmond would be the league's 7th best scorer and the top scoring shooting guard with the retirement of Michael Jordan. He would be selected to his second straight All-Star game and actually play in it, finishing with 10 points. Additionally, 
Richmond's first season of shooting above 40% from three earned him a spot in the three-point shootout, and Richmond would also go for a career-high eight threes in a 37-point performance versus the Clippers on February 25th. And he would finish the year averaging about 23.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, while being named second team All-NBA. The Kings had a sleek rebranding going into the 95 season, and would see a bit of change in team identity, as they went for a tougher, more defense-oriented approach. The team added two hard-nosed big men through the draft, in the general, Brian Grant, and the animal, Michael Smith. They got a full season from Polonies, and Hurley would play 68 games, albeit in a small role. Mitch Richmond remained the top scorer, but the guys below him looked a lot different than they had for his first three seasons in Sacramento. As Wayman Tisdale had left in free agency for the Phoenix Suns, and Lionel Simmons lost his starting spot, played just 58 games, and would only get about half the minutes he received the year prior, as his contributions plummeted. Richmond had become a perennial all-star, earning his third straight selection and winning the MVP of the game, after dropping a game-high 23 on 10 of 13 shooting. Richmond would play all 82 games for the first and only time in his career, while finishing 8th in the league in scoring and 1st among shooting guards. The Kings missed the playoffs again, but they had improved by 11 wins, as they had gone from the 25th ranked defense in 94 to the 8th ranked defense in 95. So there was hope going forward. But for the regular season, Richmond averaged about 23 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, while being named to the All-NBA second team. The Kings got nastier going into 1996, literally, as they drafted Arkansas standout Corliss Williamson, aka Big Nasty, in the 95 draft, and also scooped up tournament hero Tyus Edney out of UCLA. Richmond would be reunited with one of his Warriors running mates as the Kings traded for Sarunas Marshallonis prior to the season. He would only play 53 games, but also be the only bench player to average double figures. And if you're wondering how the Richmond trade worked out for Golden State, Billy Owens played three solid years for the Warriors before being traded to Miami for the 95 season. But then, in a full circle moment, Owens was traded back to Sacramento at the trade deadline this season, allowing Richmond to play with the man he was traded for. But this trade did involve the Kings giving up their second leading scorer at the time in Walt Williams. Richmond earned his fourth straight All-Star selection, shot a career-high 43.7% from three, and was a top 10 scorer in the league and would finish second among shooting guards, behind Michael Jordan. Richmond would also tie his career high with 47 points in a December 15th win versus Houston. The Kings had the 14th ranked offense and a defense that had regressed to 20th in the league, and would finish with the same record as last year at 39 and 43. But this was good enough to squeak into the playoffs as the 8th seed, where it would be a David and Goliath matchup versus the 64 and 18 Seattle Supersonics. No one expected the Kings to win, but it was an accomplishment in itself that they didn't get swept, as after dropping Game 1, Richmond would play 48 minutes, scoring his postseason career high of 37 on 59% shooting to will the Kings to a Game 2 win, their first playoff win since they relocated to Sacramento. Richmond would play 48 minutes the next game, scoring 24, but then just 11 minutes, scoring 5 points in the Game 4 loss that ended the series and their season. Richmond was the team's top scorer, but would shoot just 11 of 32 outside of his Game 2 performance. And for the regular season, he averaged about 23 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, while being named third team All-NBA. Richmond would get a taste of winning over the summer, as he was a member of Dream Team 3 in the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics, averaging close to 10 points as Team USA took home the gold medal. Richmond would have arguably his finest season in 1997, as he was a top 5 scorer in the league, Additionally, he would drop 32 and a career-high 13 assists versus Vancouver on January 11th, as well as 35 and a career-high 13 rebounds versus Denver on February 1st. The Kings brought back virtually the same team, and would get a full season of Billy Owens, along with newly acquired shooting guard Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. But the Kings would start 28 and 39 before Gary St. Jean was fired and replaced with Eddie Jordan, who couldn't save the Kings, as they went 6 and 9 the rest of the way to finish 34-48 and 48 and miss the playoffs. Richmond received his fifth straight All-Star selection and the third second team All-NBA selection of his career, but he was growing unhappy as he wasn't getting any younger and wanted an opportunity to win as he was at a point where he would welcome a trade. But for his regular season, he averaged a career-high 25.9 points, around 4 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. The 1998 season brought more steps in the wrong direction for Sacramento. The team had a respectable 24-29 record on February 17th, 
who would then go 3-26 the rest of the way to finish 27-55, again missing the playoffs. Richmond was the team's leading scorer, and again was fourth leading scorer in the NBA, and would earn his sixth and final All-Star selection of his career. There was also hope for Richmond this season, as Miami's president and head coach Pat Riley was actively trying to trade for Richmond up until the trade deadline, as this trade would have reunited Richmond with his run TMC point guard and star center Alonzo Mourning. Riley reportedly offered Jamal Mashburn and Isaac Austin for Richmond, but it is unsure whether the Kings didn't deem this enough of a return, or if Riley felt that Richmond, at 32 years old, wasn't worth it for his age. Regardless of why it never materialized, it would have been interesting to see a Heat team coming off an Eastern Conference Finals appearance add one of the top players in the game to challenge Michael Jordan and the Bulls, but Richmond's 10th season ended in Sacramento, with him averaging about 23 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. But Richmond would soon get his wish, as during the playoffs, he and Otis Thorpe were traded to the Washington Wizards for Chris Webber. But even though Richmond got out of a losing situation, he didn't exactly go to a contender, as Washington was coming off their first playoff appearance and winning season in over a decade, with a big reason for that being Webber's play, who was now being replaced by an aging Richmond. Richmond's time in Washington would be unstable, as in his three seasons with the team, he would have five different head coaches. But his first season wasn't bad, as he played all 50 games of the lockout year, teaming up with Rod Strickland and Juwan Howard, who would miss 14 games. But the team would finish just 18-32 and, and miss the playoffs. Richmond would lead his team in scoring, but would struggle from the field, shooting 41.2%, which would be the lowest of his career up to that point by far. But his first season in Washington would see him average close to 20 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 2.5 and assists per game. Richmond would stay mostly healthy for 2000, playing in 74 games, once again leading the team in scoring, but Howard and Strickland were close behind. The Warriors had also drafted a shooting guard out of UConn, who had the potential to be something special. Richmond's shooting improved a bit, but it was still much lower than the first decade of his career, as his scoring continued to drop. But on top of that, the Wizards just weren't a great team, and it showed, as they finished 29-53, and again missing the playoffs and Richmond's season saw him finish with averages of about 17.5 points, 3 rebounds, and 2.5 and assists per game. Richmond remained a starter going into the 01 season, and would be the team's leading scorer after 18 games. But then on December 3rd, he would suffer a partially torn MCL in a loss to the Pistons, which would keep him out until late January. He would then re-aggravate the injury in mid-March, ending his season, as he only played 37 games, the lowest mark of his career. And during the time he was sidelined, Richard Hamilton stepped up, making it clear that Richmond wouldn't be a part of their future plans. But for his shortened season, Richmond averaged about 16 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, on less than 41% from the field. So Richmond was bought out after the season, and then immediately signed with a contender in the two-time defending champion LA Lakers. The other motivation for the Wizards getting rid of Richmond was for their president of basketball operations and Richmond's former rival, Michael Jordan, to come out of retirement and join the team. But Richmond would join a completely established Lakers team, with his main role being to provide veteran leadership, as he would average about 11 minutes per game in 64 games for a 58 and 24 Lakers team. The first team with a winning record Richmond had been on since 1991. The Lakers would sweep the Blazers in round one, then beat the Spurs in five in round two, followed by a brutal seven game Western Conference Finals versus Richmond's former team, the Kings finally culminating in a sweep of the Nets in the finals, securing a Lakers three-peat and Richmond's first title. Richmond played in just two postseason games, recording three minutes and a point in a Game 5 loss to Sacramento, and two points on a minute and a half of action in the title-clinching Game 6, as he would dribble out the clock to end the game. And Richmond's regular season saw him average about four points, one and a half rebounds, and one assist per game. And he would ride off into the sunset as one of the best to ever do it. He was NBA ready from day one and showed it with his Rookie of the Year performance, before following it up with two years of basketball's most exciting trio in Run TMC. He could have complained or sat out after his unexpected trade to the Kings, but that wasn't Mitch Richmond's character, and he made the very best of the situation, doing everything he could to bring the Kings to relevancy. One of the most elite scorers the league has ever seen, and on top of that, a durable player, playing less than 64 games just twice in his career, not including the lockout. Sacramento was a small market, and they couldn't secure any top players. And Richmond could have gotten discouraged, and could have been a difficult player, quickly. 
but he rode it out for years, always giving his all and being the reason why the Kings still had a fighter's chance in any game. And although you see all his losing seasons with the Kings and Wizards, he was the furthest thing from a loser and one of the most respected and feared players of his era. But that's it for today's episode on Mitch Richmond. Hope you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe for more like this one. If you liked it, check out this one on his college rival and fellow draft mate. Or just check out the playlist for a bunch more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.